Hello everybody, this is USA underscore Dobson, and today I'm going to be doing a review of my 2008 Dodge Ram 2500 with the 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. I'll be going over some of the cool exterior and interior features that I love, some of the things I hate, which there aren't very many of, but anyway guys, here you go, enjoy the video. Alrighty guys, this is the truck, I'm going to get you guys started off with the full 360 of the truck. So you can get a general idea of what she looks like before I start getting into the more specific details. And uh, one of the first things we're going to start talking about is our wheel and tire combination and how well that they go together with the truck. So these wheels and tires were actually stock on the truck whenever I bought it. Uh, and quite honestly, although you may think these are bigger tires, you may be expecting lots of road noise, these wheels and tires, this combination, is so great on this truck these are big 35 by 1250 r17s on an 18 and a half inch wheel and man let me tell you road noise in these things you could be going 75 and you will not hear any complaints from any of your passengers about road noise i mean it is truly amazing just how quiet these things are and i think actually a lot of that is to do with just how well insulated the cabin is which you would be surprised from uh, chrysler but Truly wonderful combination. All right, so let's get you under the hood. Although under the hood could uh, use a small detail, uh, we're gonna talk about this engine. So this engine has 350 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque stock from the factory. And it was actually introduced in the year 2007 and a half to replace the 5.9 liter 24 valve Cummins. Cummins, of course, are notorious for their reliability and they are what, quite frankly, gives Dodge the reputation that they have for having some of the world's toughest engines. Thank you very much, Cummins, for that title. Now, in the next segment of my video, uh, if you know anything about the 6.7 liter Cummins diesel or anything about diesel engines in general of a modern era, you're going to know all about the emission systems. So, right here, my truck still has it. This is the truck's factory EGR cooler. And uh, I do not have the DPF filter, which is diesel particulate filter. It goes right down in there. That is deleted. But uh, this is the EGR cooler. Many times you'll hear of EGR delete kits. My EGR is still on my truck. However, uh, like this is the actuator for the EGR. All the EGR systems are unplugged. So the only thing that the EGR does in this truck right now is run coolant through it, which is completely fine. I'm not experiencing any power loss. And I'm also not experiencing any of the negative attributes that the EGR filter has with carboning up your engine. So this is one of the most common things people do for the EGR systems. They'll unplug them as opposed to removing them. Uh, one of the greatest things about removing the EGR cooler, though, is just how much more room you will get in your truck from removing it. I mean, you truly do get so much more workspace, and you also have the potential to even sell the EGR cooler on places like eBay, even Facebook Marketplace, that's an option. So later down the road, if I decide that my engine needs more space, I might get rid of that. But as of right now, it's not causing me any issues, which is why it's unplugged. So guys, let's talk about the DPF delete since I briefly touched on them in the last segment. So your diesel particulate filter, it would go right in the location in behind your turbo. Hopefully you guys can see it up in there. But right down the bend right here, see there's the turbo. Right down this bend, your diesel particulate filter will sit. And what happens is particulates from your from the combustion, remnants of the combustion, they will get trapped in that filter and it will eventually get clogged. And uh, that's just not reliable for your engine. For engines to run uh, efficiently, you need to ensure that your truck has as much airflow as possible. And clogging your exhaust is not the best way to do that. So that's why many people choose to delete their DPF filter. So while we're on the topic of emissions, let's talk newer trucks and their emission systems. So when emission systems were first introduced, introduced around the year like 2007, 2008, uh, they had their problems, of course. With anything that's new, most of the time you're going to have your own set of problems, and they will get worked out as time goes on. And they did. So more recently, you're looking at, uh, especially in trucks like your 6.7 Power Strokes, their emission systems now. I mean, there's trucks with the 6.7 Power Stroke, with the factory emission systems, that are looking at a million miles plus on factory emissions equipment. So 
is it smart to delete your emission systems on your earlier model years of trucks? Absolutely. But on your newer trucks, I mean, if you're looking to get more power, sure, it's worth it. But I mean, you're looking at cost of anywhere from like two to four thousand dollars, depending on what kind of delete kit you go with. These engines are getting more and more complex, and nowadays it's just not worth it to get into the depths of it and deal with the computer systems. So delete your older trucks, not necessarily delete your newer trucks. So as we were on the topic of uh, trucks, specifically your engine, of course, having the most airflow, one of the best things you can do for your truck is to get a good k and filter. Now a lot of people will get a k and filter, they'll think, oh, well these filters are supposed to be the best. I'll put it on, I won't change it, I won't clean it. But that's just not, that's not how they work, that's not how they're meant to be designed. So after every oil change, about five to 7,000 miles, I will take this off. I will use the, the cleaning kit assigned with it, rinse it out with a water hose, put the oil on. This ensures that your engine has better airflow, improves efficiency, gives you slightly, 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 slightly more power. But at the end of the day, the filtration that this provides the look, everything about this filter is just genius. I've had zero problems with this K&N cold air intake. Alrighty guys, so now let's talk about transmissions. My truck, as you can see by the ship's column, by the steering wheel, this is an automatic transmission. Now many people know Dodgers have bad reputations for their automatic transmissions. However, as long as you're easy on your truck and you grandpa it, promise you most of the time you will not have any issues with your transmission now my truck does have 102,000 miles so I may be a little bit biased in talking about that but the 68 RFE transmission is one of the smoothest shifting transmissions and it tows so great under a load this transmission I think it was very well tuned maybe not built with the best components if you're pushing a lot of power but for the stock power that the engine makes the transmission is made for that. It's designed for that. And it uses that power excellently. That's what I gotta say about your transmission. When you're putting more and more pressure on this transmission by trying to push and squeeze as much power as you can out of it, you're really just asking a lot. I mean, these transmissions were not built to put out any more power than they were meant for. Which is why if you have any of the new Dodge transmissions or older, keep them stocked. Be easy. Be easy with what you're doing. You won't have any issues. No need to upgrade transmissions. So perhaps I should have done a detail on the interior. I mean, in all fairness, it's not too bad. But I do use this truck fairly often. And this is how it is kept most of the time. So let's talk about the interior. Uh, 102,000 miles. This is the wear. That's just a little bit of dust. One of my complaints. So I hate these window switches. These are reused Chrysler products. Your knobs, everything is all Chrysler in this in this vehicle. All reused, nothing unique necessarily. I just hate the feel of these window switches in particular. They just they're so flimsy and cheap feeling. I just I despise these. Um, so our lights, of course, steering wheel. Steering wheel is it just feels really small. I got this bigger steering wheel cover. Absolutely love this. It's a Dickies brand. Uh, it's not real leather, it's synthetic, of course, but I love this steering wheel cover. Fits the hand a whole lot nicer. It's very comfortable. Uh, one of the things you'll see in a lot of third gens, you'll notice the seat kind of has a tear in it. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm really gentle whenever I get out of my truck. I, I have step outs too. I try not to slide off my seat so I can tear a hole in it. And uh, you can already see it's kind of starting to not necessarily come apart but you can tell it's getting worn on this side cushion i always try to sit in the center but i think this is something that is inevitable especially if your truck is lifted uh, at some point you might want to look into getting some seat covers if you're wanting to protect your seats which is something that i'll probably do in the future now let's talk speakers speakers in this truck stock along with the radio stock absolutely are awful so I, I got this Sony player here and I got four audio designs uh, speakers in all four of my doors. And let me tell you, the sound system does sound great. And I love that this uh, head unit here has Apple CarPlay. Uh, but at some point I will be investing in some subs as well. This is my back seat. I'm uh, six foot two. And I gotta say, I fit very comfortably in the back seats. 
Uh, some, something cool about the back seats here, they lift up and you have all of this storage. Uh, when you're looking at Adam adding subs and you want a good sound system, this is where you'll run into a problem. Unless you want big boxes in your, your floorboard area of your back seats, you're going to want to put them under your seats. But, as you can see, this is a molded tray. So you have to buy a molded style box and the biggest sub that you can fit back here are two 10 inch subs, which uh, is really plenty. That's all you really need anyway. I don't want to be thumping, but you have to be uh, buy a custom made box, which is a pain because not everybody can necessarily afford a custom box And it's for some people. It's not really worth it something I may look at later down on the line But it's not on my priority list per se right now uh, as far as comfort on this truck uh, With my wheels and tires and everything I would give this truck a 9 out of 10 man for the size of this thing For a diesel engine everything about it. It's just I, I don't know. I love it. I've been in other trucks but this truck, I gotta say, I absolutely love it. Uh, let's talk about fuel economy while we're on the inside. So this is your what will display your fuel economy. Average, I've got a little bit of a hot tune. I'm just pushing an extra 50 horsepower, a little bit extra torque, nothing too crazy. But on the highway, I'm looking at about 17 and a half, 18 miles a gallon. And that's, uh, that's moving at about 60, 65 miles an hour on average. So not pushing the truck that hard at all. Uh, I've definitely heard some better fuel economy numbers, but I can't complain too much about that. Um, city, I mean, you're going to be able to watch your fuel hand go down if you're really paying attention to it throughout the day. You might average like 12 or 13, 14 if you're being really gentle at the red lights. But overall, fuel economy could be better, could be worse. So it's, it's really middle of the road. If it didn't have that hot tune on there, it would definitely help the situation. But I gotta say, I'm not complaining. Love the engine on this truck. Love the sound it makes. Just a great truck overall. Now, what kind of monster would I be if I didn't show you a start of the Cummins? Well, here you go. buy video on this engine actually about a year back let's do another one see if we've destroyed our engine of course we have it though absolutely nothing it's just moving because of vibration at the moment but no there, there's no blow by I take excellent care of my engine baby this truck treat it like a grandpa treats his truck I'm not hard on it love this truck gotta get my uh, tire pressure sensor changed as well but anyway guys this was the 67 Cummins absolutely love this truck if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment and I will respond to any question that you may have anyway guys thank you so much for watching uh, peace out